I lied to you, you know, about why I left Ole. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. She claimed to have retired. She married a noble and inherited his wealth when he died. To many she was just a rich widow. I thought I knew her. My devotion to her blinded me to her less than noble attributes. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life as Bard taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing, up till the moment they showed me the documents altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me, did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured, and at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something, at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. They are, aren't they? I so adore them. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. Ah. Oh. Oh, that. Merely reflecting on the hopeless nature of the task in front of it. The most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the Darkspawn to tread upon. I shall be moved to a single tear by the tragedy. It's true. One single tear. And then it's off to the north, I think. Or maybe west. I haven't decided. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? 
There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. Oh. It doesn't have better things to do. I like to think of them as accessories. I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. So, I would assume, my former master enjoyed poking around the ruins in the deep roads after all, and bartering with others who did. As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. Why not? I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures, after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more. Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum snarl at that villager there, be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Hag. That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Pah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. Hmph. I was once larger, ten feet tall, than the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. with a chisel, and a lot of nerve. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it, dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No... There are only images. I was somewhere dark. I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? Oh. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. 
I shall kill for the master and only for the master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. Mostly they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Did I say it was bad? Huh. It thinks I hang on its every word, waiting for approval. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Ah. Oh. doesn't have better things to do. Did I not already tell it that I do not remember doing such? I remember having a master. My memories of what happened to him are vague. Clever and true. Oh, very well. Let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. Flattery. And obvious flattery, too. I feel warm and fuzzy inside. He possessed my control rod. And back then, it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then... nothing. Ho, ho, ho. It does like to laugh, does it? But who knows, I may have such a thing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me, so they simply left me. And in time I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. <sighs> in fact, at first I found it more of a relief. For so many years I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Hmm, possibly. Except that he was not experimenting with the crystals at the time, I think. But my memory is not good. It may be correct. Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless, for which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it is nothing to fear from me. Much. The things that it fights, and it fights things often, that is a different story. Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I have decided that it is not much like any of them. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? Oh. And that must be it. I knew there had to be some reason, it being a human and all. 
I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. Indeed, can it imagine the horror? <laughs> now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. That part I know, as Wilhelm often bragged about it to whomever was willing to listen to him. He claimed to have found me in the deep roads. I was in the ruins of a taig, he said, deactivated, with my control rod not far away. I think I remember a battle. It was long before, and then there was darkness. Bah, in short, no, I do not remember why I was there. It makes no difference. It was a hobby of his, scavenging. One of the reasons he traveled so much is that he was looking for entrances into the deep roads, old places the dwarves had long forgotten. And then he would sneak down and search for magical treasure, before anyone was the wiser. Indeed. He had spells that allowed him to remain hidden and move quickly, but he had no defense against the Blight and worried constantly that he would get sick. If any Darkspawn showed themselves, he fled. More often, he would have to fight other scavengers, dwarfs who had become tainted. In the end, it killed him. I mean, he found me there, right? <laughs> I wouldn't have had to put up with the twit. And I would be none the wiser. I don't think I was aware while I was there. Not like in the village. Or perhaps I was. Perhaps that was the dark place. And I simply couldn't see anything. How long could even I sit in the darkness and stare out at nothing, never sleeping? <gasps> oh, I do not wish to think of that. No. That secretive bastard refused to tell me. I would ask and ask, but no. He used to say that one day, if I were compliant and didn't talk back at his wife, he would take me there and I could look around myself. Rotten, lying bastard. If I had his head in my hands now, I would squeeze it like a giant lemon. Squish. On, then. It speaks. It doesn't have better things to do. I do not sleep, so yes, and I thank it for reminding me. Try to imagine, if it will, what it would be like to be surrounded by nothing but boring peasants, all oblivious to it. Ah, oh, yes. It certainly was the height of intrigue to listen to the accounts of how young Dornan had scandalized the village by his purchase of an Orlesian hat. And the argument that those two muddy farmers had over the price of barley for a whole summer, riveting. And then there were the birds. A whole village full of pigeons and ravens and sparrows all perching on me day in and day out. Those foolish villagers would spread bird seed near me, drawing the birds because they thought having birds perch on me was quaint. Quaint! If there hadn't been the occasional kind soul to scour me clean, I would... Ugh, I would... I don't care to discuss this anymore. It speaks. Yes, its adventures are interesting, even if the chances for success are remarkably slim. It would be better to throw oneself off a cliff, I suspect. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No doubt. Without me, it would have to carry its inventory on its own. Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. I think... I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier.
You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. You spoke to Petra, did you not? She told you I saved her from a demon. I did, but I did not survive that encounter. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. I took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back, firmly but gently, as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contained spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known, because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. I do not know. I can feel when the spirit weakens, so I should have fair warning. But come, let us not talk about this. There is time yet. What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams, because I knew they were there. I could sense the demons, too, and their presence frightened me. It was the kindly spirits of the Fade that took the fear from me. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong. But something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me, and was guarding me, for want of a better word. There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me keeping me safe, and I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance, and I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed, with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden, and help prepare her for the task that is yet before her. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. <laughs>